This article was originally published on January 31, 2013. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. In March 2012 the Russian Defense Minister Anatoly Sergeyukov said, the development of weaponry based on new physics principles, direct energy weapons, geophysical weapons, wave energy weapons, genetic weapons, psychotronic weapons, etc., is part of the state arms procurement program for 2011 to 2020, Voice of Russia. The world media reacted to this hint on the open use of psychotronic weapons by the publication of scientific experiments from the 1960s where electromagnetic waves were used to transmit simple sounds into the human brain. However, most of them avoided saying that since then extensive scientific research has been carried out in this area throughout the world. Only a Colombian newspaper, El Spectador, published an article covering the whole scale of the achievements of this computerized English translation. Britain's Daily Mail, as another exception, wrote that research in electromagnetic weapons has been secretly carried out in the USA and Russia since the 1950s and that previous research has shown that low-frequency waves or beams can affect brain cells, alter psychological states and make it possible to transmit suggestions and commands directly into someone's thought processes. High doses of microwaves can damage the functioning of internal organs, control behavior or even drive victims to suicide. In 1975, a neuropsychologist Don R. Justison, the director of Laboratories of Experimental Neuropsychology at Veterans Administration Hospital in Kansas City, unwittingly leaked national security information. He published an article in American Psychologist on the influence of microwaves on living creatures' behavior. In the article, he quoted the results of an experiment described to him by his colleague, Joseph C. Sharp, who was working on Pandora, a secret project of the American Navy. Don R. Justison wrote in his article, by radiating themselves with these voice modulated microwaves, Sharp and Grove were readily able to hear, identify, and distinguish among the nine words. The sounds heard were not unlike those emitted by persons with artificial larynxes, PG 396. That this system was later brought to perfection is proved by the document which appeared on the website of the US Environmental Protection Agency in 1997, where its Office of Research and Development presented the Department of Defense's project, communicating via the microwave auditory effect. In the description it said, An innovative and revolutionary technology is described that offers a low probability of intercept radiofrequency RF communications. The feasibility of the concept has been established using both a low-intensity laboratory system and a high-power RF transmitter. Numerous military applications exist in areas of search and rescue, security and special operations see web.iol.cz. In January 2007 the Washington Post wrote on the same subject, in 2002, the Air Force Research Laboratory patented precisely such a technology, using microwaves to send words into someone's head. Rich Garcia, a spokesman for the research laboratory's directed energy directorate, declined to discuss that patent or current or related research in the field, citing the lab's policy not to comment on its microwave work. In response to a Freedom of Information Act request filed for this article, the Air Force released unclassified documents surrounding that 2002 patent, records that note that the patent was based on human experimentation in October 1994 at the Air Force lab, where scientists were able to transmit phrases into the heads of human subjects, albeit with marginal intelligibility. Research appeared to continue at least through 2002. Where this work has gone since is unclear, the research laboratory, citing classification, refused to discuss it or release other materials. We can only stress again that the world media avoid publishing the full scale of the progress in the research of the remote control of human nervous system. Dr. Robert Becker, who was twice nominated for Nobel Prize for his share in the discovery of the effects of pulsed fields at the healing of broken bones, wrote in his book Body Electric about the experiment from 1974 by J.F. Shapitz, released due to the Freedom of Information Act request. J.F. Shapitz stated, in this investigation it will be shown that the spoken word of hypnotist may also be conveyed by modulated electromagnetic energy directly into the subconscious parts of the human brain, i.e., without employing any technical devices for receiving or transcoding the messages and without the person exposed to such influence having a chance to control the information input consciously. In one of the four experiments subjects were given a test of hundred questions, ranging from easy to technical ones. Later, not knowing they were being irradiated, they would be subjected to information beams suggesting the answers to the questions they had left blank, amnesia for some of their correct answers, and memory falsification for other correct answers. After two weeks they had to pass the test again. Dr. Robert Becker, Body Electric, Electromagnetism and the Foundation of Life, William Morrow and Comp, New York, 1985. The results of the second test were never published. It is rather evident that in those experiments the messages were sent into human brain in ultrasound frequencies which the human brain perceives, but of which the subject is unaware. 
Dr. Robert Becker, due to those publications and his refusal to support the building of the antennae for the communication with submarines in brain frequencies, lost financial support for his research which meant an end to his scientific career. Transmitting human speech into the human brain by means of electromagnetic waves is apparently, for the researchers, one of the most difficult tasks. It must be much easier to control human emotions which motivate human thinking, decision-making and actions. People who claim to be victims of experiments with those devices complain, aside of hearing voices, of false feelings including orgasms, as well of aches of internal organs which the physicians are unable to diagnose. In November 2000 the Committee on Security of the Russian State Duma stated that capabilities enabling remote control of the human nervous system or the remote infliction of health impairment are available to many modern governments. See web.iol.cz. It is rather evident that those technologies are used, in conflict with the Nuremberg Code, for experiments on unwitting human subjects. In 2001 the newspaper of the US Army, Defense News, wrote that Israel was experimenting with those weapons on Palestinians. Ibad as well ousted Honduran President Manuel Zelaya, while under siege in Brazilian embassy in Honduras, complained that he had been subjected to an electron bombardment with microwaves, which produces headache and organic destabilization, The Guardian, October 2008. When asked by Amy Goodman from Democracy Now! As president, do you know about this in the Honduran arsenal? He replied, yes, of course. The use of those weapons is time and again re-emerging in times of political crisis. According to Russian daily newspapers, during the failed putsch against Mikhail Gorbachev in 1991, General Kobes warned the defenders of the Russian White House that mind-controlled technology could be used against them. Komsomolskaya Pravda, September 7, 1991, O Volkov, Sluchi O Tom Chto Nam Davili Na Psychiku Nepet Versdalis. Poker. After the putsch, the vice president of the League of Independent Scientists of the USSR, Viktor Sedletsky, published a declaration in the Russian daily Komsomolskaya Pravda where he stated, as an expert and a legal entity I declare that mass production of psychotronic biogenerators was launched in Kiev, this is indeed a very serious issue. I cannot assert for sure that that were exactly Kiev generators that were used during the putsch. However, the fact that they were used is obvious to me. What are psychotronic generators? It is an electronic equipment producing the effect of guided control in human organism. It especially affects the left and right hemisphere of the cortex. This is also the technology of the US project Zombie 5 Inches. He further stated that due to the inexperience of the personnel who operated them the attempt to use the generators failed. Komsomolskaya Pravda, August 27, 1991, Avtori Programme Zombie Obnoruzhany v Kiev. In the USA, at present several hundred people complaining of the remote manipulation of their nervous system are preparing a class action lawsuit against the FBI, Department of Defense and other agencies, requesting them to release files pertaining to their persons, detect the harmful radiations aimed at their bodies and sources of those radiations. As well perhaps over 2,000 people are complaining in Russia, over 200 in Europe, over 300 in Japan and tens of people in China and India. Russian politician, Vladimir Lopatin, who was working on Committee on Security of the Russian State Duma and introduced there a bill banning the use of those technologies, admitted in his book, Psychotronic Weapon and Security of Russia, Publishing House Sinteg, Moscow, 1999, that in Russia experiments on unwitting citizens are carried out, when he wrote, Compensation of damages and losses connected with social rehabilitation of persons suffering from destructive informational influence must be realized in legal trial, excerpts from the book in English. It should be understood that most of those people pass through mental hospitals. Vladimir Lopatin visited the USA in 1999 as a chairman of the Military Reform Subcommittee of the USSR Supreme Soviet Committee for Issues of Defense and State Security and met with Richard Cheney. At that time he was described as the leader of a new breed of Soviet dissidents. Then he disappeared from top ranks of Russian politicians. Why has this research remained classified until present time? There are two explanations for this. First there is a secret arms race in progress in the world where the superpowers compete to gain decisive supremacy in this area and in this way master the control of the whole world. Second the governments keep those technologies in store for the case that they would not be able to control, by democratic means, the crisis that may arise as a result of their poor decisions. In both cases the era of democracy and human freedom in history will come to an end. According to the declaration of the former Russian defense minister Sergeyev, there are maximally eight years left within which those weapons will officially become a part of the Russian military arsenal. For democracy this would mean a beginning of the end. Anyway, in the past Russians were not resolved to put those means to work. 
When the construction of the American system HAARP was launched, with the system supposedly being able to target large regions of the planet by vibrating the ionosphere in brain frequencies in this experiment the brain frequencies were not used, but the HAARP system can transmit in brain frequencies as well, Russia declared its willingness to ban mind control technologies. The Russian State Duma and consequently, the Interparliamentary Assembly of the Union of Independent States addressed the United Nations, OBSE and the European Council with a proposal for an international convention banning the development and use of informational weapons. According to the Russian newspaper Segunya in March 1998, the matter was discussed with UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, and included on the agenda of the General Assembly of the UN Web.il, she said, opposite. It is most likely the USA refused to negotiate this convention and in consequence the ban of informational weapons was not discussed by the United Nations General Assembly. Even in the US Congress appeared a bill proposing the ban of mind control technologies. But this was only for a very short period of time. The bill was then changed and in the new bill the ban of those technologies was left out of the Space Preservation Bill. Neither the US Congress nor the US President made ever an effort to ban mind control weapons. The European Parliament reacted as well to the launch of the HAARP system construction, when it called in 1999 for the ban of manipulation of human beings. The resolution was passed after the testimony of the American author of the book, Angels Don't Play This HAARP, Nick Begich, which apparently convinced the European Parliament of the possible use of this system to manipulate minds of whole populations. In the report by the European Parliament's STOA Science and Technological Options Assessment Panel Crowd Control Technologies, the originally proposed text of the European Parliament's resolution is quoted. There the European Parliament calls for an international convention and global ban on all research and development, whether civilian or military, which seeks to apply knowledge of the chemical, electrical, sound vibration or other functioning of the human brain to the development of weapons which might enable any form of manipulation of human beings, including a ban on any actual or possible deployment, stressed by the author of the article, of such systems. 40. PGCII, Ref. 369. But apparently at the same time the European countries resigned on this intention when accepting the NATO politics of non-lethal weapons. The same STOA report claims that the USA is a major promoter of the use of those arms and that. In October 1999 NATO announced a new policy on non-lethal weapons and their place in allied arsenals PG, XLV, and it goes on. In 1996 non-lethal tools identified by the US Army included directed energy systems and radio frequency weapons European Parliament. At the bottom of the page, second reference PG. XLV. Directed energy system is further defined by the STOA document. Directed energy weapon system designed to match radio frequency source to interfere with human brain activity at synapse level. At the bottom of the page, first reference, appendix 6 to 67. Since 1999 those weapons have been upgraded for another 13 years. European Parliament. In 1976 the future National Security Advisor to President Carter, Zbigniew Brzezinski, wrote a book, Between Two Ages, America's Role in the Technetronic Era, Penguin Books, 1976, Massachusetts. In the book he predicted, more controlled and directed society, based on the development of technology, where an elite group will play a leading role, which will take advantage of persisting social crises to use the latest modern techniques for influencing public behavior and keeping society under close surveillance and control. The use of mind control technologies was predicted as well in the publication of Strategic Studies Institute of the U.S. Army War College, published in 1994. The scenario for the year 2000 expected the growth of terrorism, drug trafficking and criminality and drew a conclusion. The president was thus amenable to the use of the sort of psychotechnology which formed the core of the RMA, Revolution in Military Affairs, it was necessary to rethink our ethical prohibitions on manipulating the minds of enemies, and potential enemies, both international and domestic. Through persistent efforts and very sophisticated domestic consciousness raising, old-fashioned notions of personal privacy and national sovereignty changed. As technology changed the way force was applied, things such as personal courage, face-to-face -face leadership, and the warfighter mentality became irrelevant. Potential or possible supporters of the insurgency around the world were identified using the Comprehensive Interagency Integrated Database. These were categorized as potential or active, with sophisticated personality simulations used to develop, tailor and focus psychological campaigns for each. So the Institute of Strategic Studies supposed that in the year 2000 those technologies would be that advanced that it will be possible to deprive human being of his freedom and adjust his personality to the needs of ruling elite. Most probably those technologies were at this level already in 1994. The attempts to make the general public acquainted with the existence of those weapons are, with respect to the fact that it is evident that democratic public would require immediate ban of those technologies, systematically suppressed. 
Vladimir Lopatin wrote. The arms race is speeding up as a consequence of classification. Secrecy, this is in the first place the way to secure cruel control over the people, the way how to curtail their creativity, turn them into biorobots, and that psychotronic war is already taking place without declaration of war, secretly. Only if the work on mind control problem is no more covered by the screen of secrecy, extraordinariness, mysteriousness, if complex, open scientific research with international participation is carried out, the psychotronic war including the use of psychotronic weapon can be prevented. The article was deleted from the website of the Czech internet newspaper Britsky Listy www.blisty.cz. The sharing of the original web address of the English version of the same article, Means of Information War Threatened Democracy and Mankind, is blocked on Facebook and a similar article was deleted from the webpage of the Australian magazine New Dawn. There exist no legislations punishing the use of those technologies by governments. Only in Russia and some of the states in the USA there are legislations punishing the ownership or trading with those technologies by non-governmental entities. For example in the state of Michigan the sentence for this crime is equal to the sentence for ownership or trading with weapons of mass destruction.